Greetings one and all and welcome to episode number 52 of Thoughts and Hunches, Making Money in Bunches and Sucker Punches. It's your boy Stoney back for the 52nd time and I'd like to welcome my fellow hoodlums, lowlifes, scoundrels, scumbags, cheats, hustlers, fiends, degenerates, and as I was reminded last week by all of your fantastic recommendations, let's not forget criminals, jerk-offs, horn dogs, perverts, virgins, jihadists, and also altar boys. Yes, it's good to have you all back for season two, episode 19. And the reason you're back for so many times is because all I do is deliver W's in your pocket and add the green in your pocket. It just adds up every single week. Last week, 27 and 16, 62.8%. How you like me now? That's four straight weeks over 60%. The numbers are getting better as the football season is coming to a close. This is the end of the college football season. It's the end of the NFL regular season. And college basketball season is just exploding right now. So we're going to do what we can to put more W's in your pocket with a big week coming to us. So before we get started, let's go over the numbers from last week. NFL 9-7. and seven. Ho-hum. No big deal. Not a good day, not a bad day, but it's certainly not a losing day. We're now 138-82 and 82 on the season in the NFL. That's 62.73%. That's top-notch. That's solid. I dare anybody to choose a hundred, to over 200 games and hit it at a 62% clip. You just can't do it. Nobody can. NCAA basketball last week, 8-5. and five, Solid week. 58 and 36 on the season, 61.7% on the season college basketball. And finally, the Bulls, another ridiculously solid week at 10 and 4. Yes, 10 and 4 in the bowl games. Seven bowl games last week. We hit the sides, we hit the totals. That adds the 14 picks. 10 and 4, which puts us 45 and 25 in the bowl games. That's 64.28% with one bowl game remaining, and that's the national championship coming up this Monday night. And that leaves 27 and 16 for the week, 62.79% last week. Overall, here's our overall numbers from week one of this year 378, 243, and 2. That's 60.87%. All we want to do is just go higher, and that's the plan. I know you're loving the background right now. I'm on the road doing the show away from Nashville, back at home, if you may call it, in the Bay, doing it at my cousin's house, last day of the year for them to have their Christmas uh, decorations up, so uh, enjoy the background. Anyway, that's it. We're going to do it. Let's get started, and we're going to start right now, Monday night, National College Foot National Championship in college football Monday night. Now, here's the thing where I'm at now, this is the spot that nobody wants to even watch the game. Oh, it's Georgia versus Alabama, it's two southern teams. Oh, we see this shit all every year. It's the same old song and dance. Now, where I live in Nashville, they say, Yes, we deserve it because. The South is the best when it comes to football. Well, Georgia and Bama, I, we've pretty much exhausted all the options. You've all heard. We've been hearing about it since last week. We know what to expect. And here's, here's my breakdown. The game's in Indianapolis, so neutral site. Both teams got to travel north. It's going to be interesting. Uh, the total is Georgia two-and-a-half point slight favorite with a, number of 50, with a total of 52. This is the eighth time since 1998 that a team is trying to repeat as a national championship. The last seven times, they went one and six. The only winner during that time, the 2012 Alabama team, which I thought was interesting. Both teams had impressive wins last week to get them here. Alabama beat Cincinnati 27 to six. Georgia destroyed Michigan 34 to 11. 
in the 20, 2017 title game, Alabama knocked off Georgia 26-23 in that thriller in overtime where Tua hit the big uh, walk-off touchdown pass to Devontae Smith to win it all. That's the last time these two faced at this level, and here, and here they are again. It's, it's kind of a shame they didn't get to face each other during the regular season, but they did face each other during the SEC championship, and we all know how that went. Georgia hammered Alabama, uh, or excuse me, Georgia hammered everybody all season long, went into that game as a, as a six-point chalk, and what happened? Bama went in and stuck their foot up their ass, right? It wouldn't be a surprise if it happened again either. By the way, cheers, y'all. I just got a margarita. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. <sighs> Woo! Nice. Anyway, Bama has been a balanced team all year long. Yes, you can say, oh, well, they've got the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback, blah, blah, blah. But Brian Robinson runs the ball like a son of a bitch. And he did, he couldn't run the ball against Georgia. So what happened? Bryce Young took over. And Bryce Young dominated, and he absolutely kicked Georgia's ass. Now, this Georgia defense, we know. This is it. This is one of the best defenses we've ever seen. Their defense has allowed only 135 points all season. 41 of them came to Alabama in that SEC championship, which is kind of crazy, right? Kirby Smart is 0-4 against Nick Saban. So eventually he's going to have to get the W. I said during my podcast back during the week of the SEC championship that if Georgia ever had a chance to beat Alabama, that was the time. Well, now they got a second chance, and this is it, right? They've allowed less than 17 points in every game except Alabama. Only eight teams, or excuse me, eight teams against them scored less than seven points. This defense is just stupid. They're going to have so many players next year playing on Sunday in the NFL, and it all starts with the defensive line. Jordan Davis is just a massive mountain of a man who has speed and power. Devontae Wyatt, same thing, who lines up right next to him on the line. And if you want arguably the best defensive player in all of college football, linebacker Nicobe Dean is just a sick individual who blitzes, tackles, defends the tight end. He does it all. And cornerback Nolan Smith, he's going to have his work cut out for him against Bama. So this defense has to rise to take on this team because, like I said, the first time they played, Bryce Young carried Alabama to a win. But two weeks or uh, 10 days ago against Cincinnati, we saw Bryce Young uh, didn't have to do anything. It was the emergence of Brian Robinson, a career high 204 yards rushing. He he was unstoppable. Cincinnati, who has an excellent defense in their own right, had no answer for him. <coughs> The big thing uh, that Alabama has to deal with is no John Mechie, their top uh, wide receiver. They But they didn't have him against Cincinnati either. They're not going to have him Monday night, which means Jamison Williams now becomes the number one target for Bryce Young. <coughs> and cornerback Nolan Smith will have to be lined up against him. So when all is said and done, who do we like? Again, Georgia's favored over Alabama. It's not a surprise. We saw the way Georgia played against a very, very good Michigan team. But Alabama's a dog. I think Alabama's a dog for a reason. This could be the trap door of the season, which, but yes, reason and season. I'm sorry, that was an unfortunate rhyme. But I think that the books are trying to get everybody to jump on Bama because we know Bama's past as a dog because it doesn't happen very often. This is only the fourth time in the Nick Saban era that Alabama has been an underdog. And the other three times they've won by an average margin of victory of 27 points. So I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but I'm going to roll with Bama, right? Here's my, here, and, and here's why. You got to bet with who you're more comfortable in losing with. If I bet on Alabama and Georgia wins, I tip my hat to Kirby Smart and I say, great job, you guys won and you guys deserve it. If I take Alabama or if I take Georgia and Alabama wins, I'm going to be kicking myself saying, what the hell was I thinking? I should have known better than to bet against Nick Saban in a national championship game as a dog. So Bama's a dog, 
They're two and a half point favor, uh, dogs. I'll take them. Give them to me. I'll take both those points and the hook. You want to buy it up to three if it makes you feel better? Great. Good. By all, by all means. As far as the total goes, it's 52. I'm also going to take the over because the consensus is if you like Bama, you like the over. If you like Georgia, you like the under. Well, I like Bama, so I'm going to take the over. Bama plus two and a half over 52 and a half. Those are your picks for the last college football game of the season. Enjoy them and fire, fire away. Now we move on to college basketball tomorrow, Saturday. This, uh, a lot of good matchups. So let's get right to them. And these are going to go by pretty quick. We'll start at 12 p.m. Again, all game times are Eastern time, okay? 12 p.m., we're going to take George Washington plus seven and a half against Dayton. Dayton comes into GW. GW's playing well. Dayton's playing better, but seven and a half's a big number. I like the monitor. Uh, yeah, I like GW at home. That's that's just the easy pick. 12 p.m., uh, Wichita State plus 12 and a half at home against 12 Frank Houston. Houston is one of my darlings, just like they were last year when they made it all the way to the Final Four. Houston is loaded again. Kelvin Sampson is one of my favorite coaches. They're playing really good ball, and they win this game, but they don't cover. They got to win by 13 or more. No, I'm going to take the Shockers at home. 12 p.m., NC State hosting Clemson. NC State, one and a half point chalk. <coughs> Excuse me. I like Clemson in this matchup. NC State hasn't looked good lately. Woo, that's Aquila. Nice. Ah, Clemson's playing better right now than NC State. <coughs> so that's the play. Moving on, 12 p.m. Uh, Purdue heads down to Penn State. Third-ranked Purdue as eight-and-a-half-point chalk. I'm going to stick with the dog theme. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Let's see here. Let me get this out of the way. Last time I was coughing like this, my brother was convinced I had COVID, and he still holds it over my head. All right, there we go. Ah, oh, that's a lot better. Penn State plus eight and a half at home against third-ranked Purdue. 12 p.m., Providence 16th seeded Friars or four and a half point chalk against the Johnnies. St. John's comes in on a bit of a hot streak, but Providence is playing better. Providence has rolled over their last four teams, double digit winners, four and a half points at home is nothing. Lamb, that's your first favorite to take tomorrow. 1 p.m. Eastern time. One of the most overrated teams in college basketball, the North Carolina Tar Heels are at home and a massive six and a half point chalk against Virginia. No way, no how. Give me the Cavaliers. This one's not even close. 1 p.m. <coughs> uh, Arkansas versus A&M. This one's in College Station. A&M's one and a half point chalk. I'm going to roll with Donnie O's boy E. Muss and... The Arkansas Razorbacks, they're playing well. They're one and a half point dogs. Take the one and a half. 1 p.m. Oklahoma State at home is three and a half point dogs to 14th seeded Texas who comes in. Oh, man, Texas right now. Texas right now is, is looking like a Final Four team. <coughs> they're, they're doing everything right. Chris Beard is a Damn genius what he did at Texas Tech all those years. Now he's got better talent to Texas. He can really turn it up a notch, and Texas is doing it. They're getting it done. I'm going to take Texas here. I'm going to lay the three and a half on the road against Okie State. 2.30 p.m., Michigan versus Michigan State. Another one of my very, very overrated, another one of the, my top five most overrated teams in college basketball, and that's Michigan. Every time I turn on the TV, they're losing. Juwan Howard, oh my God, Michigan, but they were so good last year. Yeah, but they lost last year to who? Oh yeah, that was UCLA who beat them. Yeah, yeah, my UCLA boys knocked them off last year. Um, I like uh, I like Michigan State here. Michigan State is two and a half point dogs. They're tenth seeded. Remember the beginning of the season? Tom Izzo said the same thing that he always says. <coughs> tough, tough uh, preseason schedule prepares you 
for the long season? Well, he's got them ready. They're already ranked 10th. And the uh, conference play just started. Screw Michigan. I don't care if this one's at Chrysler Arena. I'm going to take Michigan State and the two and a half. <coughs> Damn, got a tickle. Can't get rid of it. 4 p.m. San Diego State at home, two and a half point chalk against 20, 20th ranked and undefeated Colorado State. Yeah, the Rams right now are 11 and 0, and they're surprising a lot of teams, but San Diego State at home is a tough out. I'm going to take La the Aztecas minus two and a half. 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Florida, nine and a half point dogs at ninth ranked Auburn. Bruce Pearl. Every single time Auburn plays and plays well, we all say the same thing. Well, it's Bruce Pearl. He's got to be bending some rules somewhere. But, hey, whatever he's doing right now, it's working because the Tigers are one of the hottest teams going. They're all the way up to a number nine ranking. Florida's solid, if not unspectacular, but they're at home. I'm going to take the nine and a half at the McConnell Center. 8 p.m., Duke versus Miami. Duke comes in with a number two seed and a 14-point chalk. Excuse me, 14 and a half point chalk. I'll take that extra hook. I like Miami plus the points. Miami's one of the hottest teams going. And Duke is Duke is Duke. They're on TV more than Leave It's a Beaver reruns. 8.30 p.m. Mississippi versus Mississippi State. This one's down in Oxford. Mississippi State comes in as three and a half point chalk. Take the Bulldogs, lay the three and a half. And finally, the Degenerate Special, which I finally lost last week for the first time in seven weeks. We, we took it under the chin last week. We're going to fire back this week. 10 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow night. BYU against St. Mary's. This one's up in Provo. I like the Cougs. I like the Cougs a lot. BYU's playing excellent football or er, basketball, and that's not going to slow down right now. Lay the three and a half. So there you go. That's it for college hoops. That's 14 of them. All right. So we're already 16 picks in. We're halfway through the show. Time to move on to the NFL. You ready? NFL picks for set for Saturday and Sunday. This this is the last NFL, uh, the last week of it's week 18. It's the last week of the regular season. Some teams are playing for something. Some teams are playing for nothing. It's kind of all over the place. Some teams have COVID. Some teams, well, actually, all teams have injuries. But you know, you just gotta kind of wade through and see what makes sense. So we're going to start with tomorrow, Saturday, 4.30 p.m. in Denver. The 7-9 Broncos are at home hosting the 11-5 Chiefs. I'm going to take the Broncos right now. 11 points is a very, very big number. I'm not sold on Denver. Denver doesn't play well. Kansas City could come in and beat them by three touchdowns. But KC's just basically playing for seeding right now, right? They're hoping they could win and Tennessee loses. They could still sneak their way into a... Uh, number one seed overall and get that uh, week one bye, but I don't see it happening. But I do see the Chiefs winning here. Chiefs to win, Broncos to cover, take the 11. Saturday, 8.15 p.m. The 11 and 5 Cowboys head head up uh, head up north to Stony Delphia to take on the 9 and 7 Eagles. The Eagles, I've been on them all season. Right? They delivered for me last week. They keep delivering. They've covered a lot of freaking numbers while nobody really paid much, paid much attention to them. Dallas, on the other hand, is 11-5. This is where Philly's run ends. Dallas comes in, swats them down, covers the four and a half, to, uh, covers the four, excuse me. Let me fix that. That's an even four, not a four and a half. Cowboys, minus four. Sunday now we move on. 1 p.m. Eastern time. The Tennessee Titans, the number one seed in the AFC at 11 and 5. They head south to Dallas, or excuse me, to Houston to take on the Texans. Tennessee's a 10 and a half point favorite, big number, too many, too many points. Tennessee wins, Houston covers. That's dog, favorite, dog. Now you're going to start seeing a trend here <laughs> as we move on to the, uh, the rest of the NFL. 1 p.m. Eastern Time Sunday. Bengals and Browns, great rivalry. 10 and 6 Bengals have already won the NFC North. Not really playing for much. Joe Burrow's going to sit. Uh, Cleveland is 7 and 9. They're at home. They're out of it. They've kind of packed everything in. But somehow, some way, they're six point favorites. Probably because of the fact that Joe Burrow's out. 
I don't give a shit. I'm going to take the Broncos. I'm going to take the six. Yes, that's three out of four dogs. Moving on. 1 p.m. Packers, the number one seed in the NFC at 13 and three. They have nothing to play for. Everything's wrapped up. According to Matt LaFleur, Green, uh, the Packers will start Aaron Rodgers, but for how long? He has absolutely nothing to play for, which is why they're only three and a half point chalk on the road against the Lions, my Lions, who I've taken all season long to the tune of their 213 and one record, but also to the tune of a 10 and six ATS record, which can't be denied. Yes, they lost last week, but I'm going to take them here at home, make that four out of five dogs. Take uh, Detroit plus three and a half. Moving on, 1 p.m. Eastern time. The Bears head into Stoneyopolis to take on the Vikings. The Bears are 6-10 and 10 and have played well lately. They really have. But right now they're banged up. It doesn't matter whether it's Nick Foles or whether it's uh, uh, Justin Fields. Actually, neither one of them is going to play. It's the Red Rocket, the Red Rifle, excuse me. Yes, yes, you guessed it. He's back. Andy Dalton, the pride of TCU. He's getting the start for the Bears as they head into Stoneyopolis to take on Minnesota, who doesn't have anything to play for. They're seven and nine. But I'm gonna take the Vikings. I'm gonna lay five and a half. Yes, I took a favorite. Don't get used to it. That's four out of six dogs. Moving on. 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh in in uh, the Snoopy Stadium in New Jersey, the Giants four and twelve, awful season, awful team, awful organization. They're hosting the six and ten Redskit. Oops, the Washington Football Team. That's what they're called these days. This is the last game ever that they'll be called the Washington Football Team. Thank God. At least they'll finally get a team name. I'll still be calling them the Redskins until somebody gets it out of my head. But in the meantime, take the Giants plus the seven. That's way too many points. That's five out of seven dogs. Give me the Giants. Moving on, 1 p.m., Colts versus Jaguars. This one's down in the sun of uh, Jacksonville. And it's 15 and a half points. The, Jet, uh, the Colts are... Nine and seven, but they're 15 and a half points against the worst team in the NFL, the Jags, who will not win this game, but they will cover. Take the two and 14 Jags, take the four, 15 and a half points, Jags cover. Six out of eight dogs. 4.25 p.m., the afternoon slate on Sunday. 49ers versus Rams, classic SF versus LA matchup. Rams come in as four and a half point chalk at 12 and four. The 49ers head down to La La Land. And they're nine and seven, and it's a win and in for the 49ers. They're four and a half point dogs. I like the Niners in this spot. Why not? Let's keep rolling. Eight, eight dogs out of ten picks. 425 p.m. Saints versus Falcons. The Battle of the Domes down in the NFC South. Seven and nine Falcons, eight and eight Saints. Saints are three and a half point uh chalk uh on the road. This one's in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I don't care. I'm going to take uh, uh, the, the Falcons in this one. I'm going to take the Falcons to win outright. Take them plus the three and a half if you must. But if you really want a good payday, plus three and a half, come on. You can't beat that. <clears throat> but a money line play would be even better. Take the Falcons plus three and a half. 425 p.m., Battle of New York. Well, it's not really Battle of New York. It's just two teams from New York playing against each other. Uh, this one's up in Orchard Park. The ten and six Bills don't really have much play for except for seeding. The four and twelve Jets come into town. Bills are sixteen and a half point favorite. I don't give a shit. I'm going to take the Jets. Bills win. Jets cover. Another dog. Four twenty five p.m. Patriots and Dolphins. This one's down in South Florida. The ten and six New England Patriots. They're just playing for seeding. Also, the Dolphins are playing better. Yeah, they lost last week uh, to. Tennessee beat them up pretty good to ruin their seven-game win streak. But the Finns have played great. Eight and eight this season. They're six-and-a-half-point dogs at home. Take another dog. They're called the Finns at home. 4.25 p.m., the Seahawks head down south to the desert southwest to take on the 11-5 and five Cardinals. The Cardinals have had a good season. They still they, they have a chance of winning the 
uh, NFC West, them and the Rams, right? Uh, the Cards win. The Seahawks cover. The Seahawks are done. This is the last game for Pete Carroll. Probably the last game in Seattle for Russell Wilson. Who knows? But there will be changes in Seattle. But at this point, I like Seattle plus six and a half. Cards win. Seahawks cover. 425 p.m. The last game of the afternoon slate. The Panthers versus the Bucks. Five and eleven Panthers have absolutely nothing to play for. The Bucks are twelve and four. The Bucks are uh, uh, seeking that, or uh, uh, they're pretty locked into the number two seed as long as they win, and they're going to win. They're eight and a half point favorites here. They're at home. They're playing a really, really bad uh, Panthers team. So I'm going to take the Bucks. I'm going to lay the points and just let them dance all day long. Finally, the last game of the week. The last NFL game of the season. And it's a win and in and lose and go home for both teams. AFC West, Raiders versus Chargers. This one's down in Las Vegas. The Chargers somehow slipped to 9-7 and seven when they were 9-5. and five, Had their own destiny in their hands. <coughs> if you look back, <clears throat> excuse me. If you look back over the last 20 years, these are two chronically underachieving teams. Many times have both these teams had the goods to get to the playoffs and to do some damage, yet neither team seems to make the playoffs. Chargers had the playoffs locked up a couple weeks ago. Now they're on the border. Raiders were done a couple weeks ago. Now they're back on the border. I'm taking the Raiders plus the three at home. Both teams are 9-7. and seven. Winner gets in. The Raiders are playing better right now. The Chargers are not. The Chargers inexplicably are three-point uh, uh, favorites. Road road chalk? No, thank you. I'm gonna catch. I'm, I'm gonna take the Raiders catching three. That seems like the right move. So there you go. There's all 16 NFL plays. Add them all up. You got 16 NFL plays. Both sides of the NCAA national championship game. 14 NCAA college hoop plays. That's a total of 32 total plays. That's not a lot, but going forward, as college football is now out of the picture, I'm going to start giving you 20, 25, 30 college basketball plays a week because the call, the NFL picks are going to go way down now. They're going to get cut in half as the NFL takes takes shape next week. So again, picks will continue to come out next uh, every Friday. So be on the lookout for it. And just remember, if you want to win big, you got to bet big. To me, the action is the juice. There's money on the streets that can't be ignored. And finally, good luck to you.